I'm just struck by like uh, there's I've kind of like there's some beauty in this like scene of music you all had that seems like very you're a child you know like I think I asked him like okay so six years different so you're 14 and these guys are 20 and he's like you just kind of saw that you, he saw you could write songs and knew your brothers and you were a cool curious kid and whatever and he's just like yeah he was a young kid and we made sure that they didn't like drink or stuff too much or whatever a little bit but like he was just there what was that like for you as now you're the 14 year old and these guys are this like were they peers were they i mean older brother like yeah to you? It, like how'd that feel i mean it was i mean they were very generous i mean basically like my oldest brother maddie was basically the same age as like casher and mcginn and those guys and then there was like ted stevens who's maybe a year or two younger so, like, I mean, literally, like, Tim Kasher and McGinn and, I mean, they were, like, coming to my house to hang out with my brother when I was, like, five years old. I mean, they knew me, like, my yeah. entire life, you know? Right, And right. then when I started making music, of course, they were, like, I think they were supportive in the sense of how you would just be supportive to, like, a little kid that's, like, trying to do something, you know? Very older brotherly like right. ah that's cool you're playing the show and then at some point i mean honestly i think it was like ted stevens was the first person that like he uh do you know who he is he's in cursive but yeah, he was totally. in like lullaby for the working class yeah totally anyway another amazing songwriter and very special soul but uh i think i played him like a song on my porch one day and he's like I'm gonna he's like I'm gonna come back and record you so he like brought his four track over and we recorded like water this record like my first I guess record although it was just like a tape but um yeah he recorded it all and he kind of got the ball rolling he also like there used to be this place called Kilgore's in Omaha that was like a coffee shop slash bar slash they had shows like like Simon Joyner and like Alex McManus who's like in the Bruce anyway like a lot of Bill Hoover a lot of these guys that we looked up to played there I think it was like Thursday nights there was a thing anyway Ted was playing there one night and me and Justin my my other brother went to see him and he's like I'm gonna stop my set early and I'm gonna like have my friend Connor come sing a song, and I got, I got up there so nervous. I remember like my, my knee was like shaking. I couldn't like hold the guitar, and I just like played like one song, and then after the show, this guy Bill Hoover, who's like a great artist and songwriter from Omaha, he was like, I got another show here, like. You know, this was like May or something. He's like, I had another show here in like June, like a month away. He's like, Do you have like enough songs to like play a set? And I was like, Yeah, but I was like totally lying. <laughs> <laughs> so like, well, I went home and like wrote a bunch of songs so I could like play a show. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of how that happened. And then, you know, Tim Casher, I always like idolize. Like, I love slow down virginia and he was in a band with my brother like in high school so i always you know i always like l really looked up to him and then like i don't know kind of out of the blue he's like let's start a band when i was like 14 i was like really you know it's like I, it's like your hero asking you to like start a band with them so that's when we started like yeah. commander venus and whatever the, as they say the rest is history but it's so cool yeah it was um I was extremely lucky to have like that amount of like encouragement and support from from like people that I looked up to and also like cared like in a genuine way yeah. about me. There's such evident like love and support and community and everything that I just I just think to me it's like okay this podcast is a, a some guy on an island uh, DIY like project thing that. There's no, there's some, Tim Casher doesn't need to do that. He's the first guest on it. It's not like there was anyone to even be like, hey, this person's been on it, blah, blah, blah. And so to do that and then also assist in the process of having Todd come on and then pass it along to Matt to then have you come on. Like there's like this, like, 
how, these people are all so nice to each other. There is such like a communal thing with this that like bands lifting other bands and featuring other people and everything. And uh, I don't know. I felt, I felt like it was a cool chance to get a, a little feeling of a slice of that like communal support and encouragement to whatever. It was like seeing it in action. If you enjoyed that clip, you should check out the After the Deluge podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, we have full episodes there as well as right here on this YouTube channel. So hit the subscribe button and maybe check out whatever's being suggested to you right here. Thanks so much.